Hey everyone, it's Brian here from Massey's Main Entertainment. Uh, we're back again. It seemed like we had a little bit of a hiatus here, um, but we're back doing our Build a Perfect Album series and one of our favorite years of all time, I've got to think. I've got to think it's in the top three maybe years of all time for sure. Uh, 1977, an absolute banger of a year. Uh, maybe one of the most difficult albums, uh, or double album actually, that I had to put together. And um, wow, it just really was a, an arduous chore, but I had to go with my gut feeling and make a lot of personal choices with this one. And maybe that's the direction we're going to be heading. Joining me today is Rich, as usual. Rich, thank you. Hello. Rich, is, this was his year that he picked, so he's going to lead off tonight. I'll go <laughs> second, and Doc will go third. Doc, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, guys. It's kind of a last-minute scheduling for us to get this in, and so I'm, I'm really happy that we got a chance to do it. So, guys, what did you think of 77? What, what was it like for you? I would say 77. Uh, it, it climbs a little on the coattails of 76 and what I said about 76. Still, still album heavy, I think, in 77, mm -hmm. a lot of it. Um, I do find the singles to be a little bit more solid in 77 than I did, let's say, in 76. Maybe that offsetting side between the two. There's enough great tunes here that we we could have had 40 songs, and I think we'd be 40 or 50 songs, and we'd be pretty happy with 40 or 50 songs out of this year. Really solid tunes. Lots of great ones to pick. Comes down to some personal choices in the end, and I think we're going to find that out as we go. But I, I think overall, we're going to cover off a lot of the bases here, I think, when we go through our list. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i glad it's a double, obviously, because there, there are just way too many songs to make this a 12-song yeah. album for sure. And that way, a lot of my favorite albums, which are in 77, I can get two songs on each. And I did that. I think seven or eight artists are repeated among my choices something like that. <laughs> uh, well speaking of which that's that that's going over the rules real quick we actually do get to pick two songs from each album because it is a double album for this particular year and uh if there's any singles that are available that weren't re you know weren't released on an album you can pick those or and especially deep album cuts if you want to go that direction uh maybe you start seeing that a little bit more from some of us in, in the coming years i hope so this seems like that would be a great way to go uh outside of that guys um I, I feel like we're kind of rocking and rolling i just want to remind everyone that we have 1965 out there all the way through 1976 all on our channel each one of those videos include links to a spotify list that has each one of our selections for that particular year i invite everyone to uh, check those out please like comment subscribe we really want to get to uh, push it out there a little bit more so the likes and comments really help us get into that algorithm so any type of listen uh, or, you know, additional stuff you can do for us. We really appreciate it. So, Rich, this is yours, buddy. Yeah, let's see go. what we got here. Uh, I'm going to kick it off with Eddie Money, Two Tickets to Paradise. This is a song I've always liked. Uh, I liked Eddie Money, his first album, his debut album. Um, I, you know, just a, a nice rock tune with a catchy chorus. Uh, Eddie Money was an ex-police officer in New York and turned over to rock and roll. Uh, I just like that that chorus of two tickets to paradise, pack your bags and leave tonight. He's going off and uh, getting out of Dodge, so to speak. And there's a great guitar solo here by Jimmy Le Leone, who was in the band at that time, and it really dominates the song. So that's my lead-off track. It gets off to a rousing start. Number two is Peter Gabriel, Salisbury Hill, autobiographical in nature, decision to leave Genesis, a beautiful song, just a lovely arrangement. Uh, love the lyrics on it. Um, yeah, based, I don't know whether he was kicked out. I think he decided to leave Genesis. There was a lot of yeah. stuff going yeah. on in the band at that time, and he, he wanted a solo career. And this is just writing about it, honestly, as he could. And uh, it, it's fantastic. It's a wonderful song. My number three is Billy Joel, The Stranger, the title track. I love that opening piano. And then the whistle, he gives that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's a very uh, charismatic kind of song. And I like the lyric here where he says, we all have a face that we hide away forever. And we take them out and show ourselves when everyone is gone. I think everybody can relate to that. There are certain people you can be yourself around. There's other people that you want to put a little front on with or, you know, play the game, whatever it takes. And that's what he means by the stranger. And everybody has that inside them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, 
So that's that's making my album for sure, number three. Number four, we're going to rock it up a bit, kick it up a notch. Barracuda by Heart off the Little Queen album. Just a real killer rock tune. Uh, It was written in response to a sleazy journalist who was asking them questions they didn't want to answer. The girls, the Wilson sisters, Ann and Nancy, and Heart in those early years were fantastic. Great rock band. Uh, So they're they're going to make an appearance on this album for sure. Number five, Leonard Skinner. Always have to go back to Leonard Skinner off the Street Survivors <laughs> album, their last album before that fatal plane crash. The song is That Smell. Love it. Uh, Oak Tree, You're In My Way. Whiskey Bottles, Brand New Car. Yeah, you know, just getting trashed and living the lifestyle. And the Oak Tree was in his way that night. Uh, there's too much coke and too much smoke. All the lyrics are based around getting wasted and drunk and whatever they were doing, they, they put it in, uh, into their music. And I admire that because they weren't hiding from it or trying to deny what was going on in the band. <laughs> it's part of their this life. This is us, man. Take, we're yeah. Southern boys. We like to rock. We like to party. And, uh, Can't you it. smell that smell? And there's too many dudes <laughs> going on and whatever they were doing at the time. What's that smell? Well, my car just blew yeah, up. That's right. like, get an oak tree, you know? Uh, and finally on uh, side one here, I'm going to end it with a classic Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I love uh, the dynamic of that band, all the infighting and the turmoil going on, the drama between Lindsay and Stevie and John and Christine and Mick was doing his thing. Everybody had marital, extramarital affairs, divorce, separation going on. They put it into the music again. Um, it's a great song, Go Your Own Way. And I, I just love the, the killer guitar at the end where it's a and yet that would end the side and you'd flip it over and get into some different music on uh, on side B here. Nice. I've already got three of yours. <laughs> um, I wanted to lead <laughs> off with a bang, you know? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 love, I love your choices, you know? I mean, come on, something from rumors is going to make all of our lists. It's just a question about <laughs> what it is. Right. You know, Doc, Doc, you cheated last time. And just, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I put one in there, way. but uh, that's fine, you know? <laughs> But yeah, I love the stranger. Yeah, probably my favorite song by Billy Joel. Um, yeah, you know, it's a it's a great song. So that's a great one. And um, and I had one other of yours that I'll I'll get into when okay. we get there. So yeah, I think uh, I also uh, I, what I will say there is I don't think I missed an artist on your first six. I'll say <laughs> that's that. All I'll say. Uh. <laughs> that's all you got to say. Okay, cool. That's all you got to say. <laughs> All right, let me get into my side B here. Um, side B, of course, I'm going to go with Jackson Brown's Running on Empty. Uh, just a, He does it on the album. It's, a, it's sort of a li- half live, half uh, songs that were recorded on the buses and in the hotel rooms. But this is a live song, and it has that beginning where you hear the crowd buzzing, and then he's you know, talking about life on the road, touring, burnout, looking back at the years gone by, like so many summer fields, all that stuff. And we all have that feeling when the, the years start ganging up on us and passing quickly. And you can't remember if it's five years ago or 10 years ago. That's basically what this song is about. You know, he, he can't keep up with the times running on empty. So that's going to make my uh, lead off track on side B. Next, I'm going to go to a little guitar blues here. Lonesome George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers. One bourbon, one scotch and one beer. Love this song. George out of Wilmington, Delaware, played a little semi-pro baseball at one time. A great guitar player. I like his style of guitar playing. He doesn't necessarily write all of his songs. He does, covers a lot of old standards and stuff, but I think he does a fantastic job on it. And I like that song too, in particular, One Bourbon, One Scotch, and One Beer. Number three is from the band Styx from the Grand Illusion album. Feeling... What's it called? Fooling Yourself, Angry Young Man. Love the song. It's a, a hard Great rocking tune. song. Great tune. Uh, Tommy Shaw, lead vocal. I wanted to get at least one stick song on here because I think in 77 they were pretty much at their peak between The Grand Illusion and the next year, Pieces of Eight. I mean, those are two killer albums there. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four, Foreigner's debut album. Feels like the first time. First Foreigner song I think I ever heard. Uh, Lou Graham, great vocalist, just solid 70s classic rock, and I wanted to represent Foreigner as well. So back-to-back Sticks and Foreigner, who were 
you know, arena rock or the classic rock at that time. My fifth song, I'm going to mellow it down a little bit with some jazz rock here from Asia, Steely Dan, Deacon Blues. Probably my favorite song on that album. Uh, you know, Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, they had the uh, magic. They brought in the pro professional instrumentalist to, you know, accent what they were doing. There's their, their storytelling and their pristine music, and they do a fantastic job. Asia is a great album, and Deacon Blues is a great song. Just want to read a couple lyrics while I have the chance. Uh, learn to work the saxophone. I play just what I feel. Drink scotch whiskey all night long and die behind the wheel. They've got a name for the winners in the world. I want a name when I lose. They call Alabama the Crimson Tide. They call me Deacon Blues. That's solid songwriting right there, and, and Fantastic and a great saxophone as well. And finally, I'm ending my uh, volume one and my side B with uh, soft rock here, acoustic, Dust in the Wind by Kansas. I love this song. Uh, it's sort of, uh, it's not really a religious song. It's more like, what is the meaning of life? Does it have a meaning at all? It may be meaningless. All we are is dust in the wind. Uh, just a tiny drop of water in an endless sea. It's like, what does it all mean? All that kind of stuff. I've got a great violin solo by Robbie Steinfeld, who passed away last year. And uh, I wanted to put it on my album. And I thought that was the right spot for it. Leave you with something to think about before you go to volume two, Dust in the Wind. Nice. Yeah, again, I had I had three more of yours. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're thinking the same in 77. Well, right? yeah, we're, yeah, we're thinking the same. Yeah, there's some splashes there where I, I felt like it, it, it was going to head in a different direction there for a moment, I thought maybe. and uh, But no, it kind of it kind of went back to a, back to where I thought it was going to go. So, Good album, Rich. Yeah, yeah I, was, I wanted to get that thorough good song in there because I really, I like that particular song. That's a little different for me, but there it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a good album, Rich. It's a yeah. good album, buddy. Now, how, many of those, how many of those artists do you have, Doc? <laughs> I'm not going to get into this. Okay, now. Uh, this, is, this is, reminds me too much of a comment I made in 76. Okay, so I'm just cool. going to let it ride. So. Yeah, wait <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Yeah, I think All, right. Really cool. All right. So I guess I'll get into mine then. Let's do it. Go for it. Okay, so I... I I definitely was going to have something off rumors and this was my third favorite song of all time. So I've got dreams. Um, obviously you could pick a, a lot of songs from here yeah, and this is, uh, you know, the, di the difference between uh, Lindsay ripping into Stevie and Stevie <laughs> ripping in <laughs> into Lindsay is really the only difference here between Rich and I, yeah. I love the bass on this and something that's always, I keep calling back to when I recommend rumors to people who've never heard it or especially young people who say, coach, you know, can you recommend, an album yeah. to listen to. And I say, hey, just listen to Rumors. And particularly, pay attention to the drumming on this oh. album. It is just, Mick Fleetwood is just at the absolute yeah. top of his game on this album. It yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Everything. It's nothing nothing too out front, nothing too, fall, you know, back, too far back. He's just right there and in the moment. And man, you know, for all the stuff that that band's going through, yeah. uh, for them to put out an album like that, that that's lightning in a bottle, fellas. You just, that doesn't come around again. It just doesn't do it. So number two for me, I've got David Bowie's Heroes here. Um, you know, obviously I, I, I like this song a lot. I, I, there's a, several cover versions of it too that are, I think are really good, uh, but nothing beats uh, Davey here. I think uh, there's a movie that has this on the soundtrack and, and the young kids and it can't figure out what the name of the song is. So all, all movie long, they refer to it as the tunnel song because every time they drive through this tunnel, they like to play this song while they're, while they're cruising and stuff. And, and here I am yelling at the TV going, it's David Bowie. God damn it. <laughs> calling it the tunnel song. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's Bowie. It's Bowie. Um, so I, I put that on there. I love the song. Yeah. Uh, number three, I have, I have this song in the exact same spot that Rich did. I've got the stranger by Billy Joel. I love the intro to the song. It's got yeah. that whistling little thing yeah. where it kind of brings you in and, you know, it makes you think like you're hanging out in a, on a balcony, you know, on a balcony in the New York skyline or something like that. Yeah. It's got that texture to it. And Billy's really cool about songs like that. So, yep. Number four for me, I've got Mr. Blue Sky uh, yep. from ELO. Got to have something by those boys on there because they were just cranking them out in the 70s. Oh, my God. 
Uh, Fred, Fred Lynn is just, you know, and so underrated. We've talked about that so much. And this is kind of a little bit more upbeat song, kind of bouncy and, you know, um, but textured. Got a lot of different things going on, a lot of different instruments being played. And I, yes, I love it. Does. I love it a lot. So Rich will be proud of me on this one. I think we did a top 10 together of Steely Dan. And as you know, on my number one on my list was Deacon Blues, even though Can't Buy a Thrill is my favorite Steely Dan album. Yep. This is my favorite song. It is Aja's just an absolute ma masterpiece, and this song is just oof, yeah. just incredible to think about and sit and listen to the production work on it. Um, absolute uh, masters of the jazz rock fusion. Um, I don't think anyone's uh, going to ever top anything that they've ever done in that uh -huh. regard. So, and closing out uh, the first side, I've got Eric Clapton's from Slow Hand. I've got Wonderful Tonight, a yeah. favorite Clapton tune. Yep. Um, nice little power ballad, you know, talking about, you know, him and his girl going out for the evening. And he's talking about how <laughs> damn fine she looks. And, uh, <laughs> good for you, Eric. Good for you for laying, laying some good props <laughs> to you, woman. I really have, I, I had to yeah. appreciate that. So um, that's my first side. Wow. We're really in uh, unison because we do have the three songs and the other three are all honorable mentions of mine. I've mentioned them all in my honorable mentions. So. Yeah. Six for six, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I would say something along the lines of, yeah, Brian, I like that album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Solid. Well, that's good, because on side B, I decided to, usually I, I, I put this, I put the oddball stuff that's kind of me on side C usually, but I went ahead and threw it on side B here to kind of change things up a little bit. Okay. I don't like that. Good. Okay. So on side B, I've, I'm starting off with uh, do you want to dance by the Ramones from uh, rocket from rocket to Russia? Um, I, I, I'm big into, I like, I love the punk scene. I like the post punk scene that's going on in the seventies and that leads into this power pop stuff. And uh, the Ramones, I, I'm a huge fan of theirs. Uh, this is my favorite album by them. So, and you know, what's not to enjoy? I mean, you, it's not like their songs are going to linger for very long, right? I mean, <laughs> once you're in, once you're into it, by the time you understand you understand what the chorus said, the, the song's hey, over. So you got to go back and play it again. So, uh, great, great, great tune, great album. So, keeping with that motif, I'm going to stay right with punk, and I've got from the Clash's debut album. I've got their lead off track, Janie Jones. Um, oh. The Clash, I would think, if it wasn't for the Guns of Brixton on London Calling, The Clash's debut album would be my favorite album. But I think Guns of Brixton kind of pushed London Calling over the edge for me uh, just slightly. Uh, but a great tune if you should check it out. If you have never listened to The Clash's debut album, it's great all the way through. Uh, kind of keeping with the post-punk thing, but I'm, Rich is going to love this guy because he's like the master of uh, power pop in the 70s, and that's going to be Elvis Costello's Allison from My Aim is True. He's just a, you know, Elvis, I call him the the uh, clown the clown prince of uh, yeah, power pop, and that's really kind of what he was, if you yeah. think about it. I mean, he had this really oddball way of approaching pop music, and uh, but, man, talk about influential. I mean, some of these songs, later on, you'll hear them from people, you know, Matthew Wilder and Nick Lowe and people like that. You're going to hear all those things again. And it all starts with Elvis Costello. So uh, Aim is True is a great album. Uh, kind of keeping it there. I know some people run hot and cold on these guys, and I don't blame them, but I, I, I like the Talking Heads. I'm going to go with Psycho Killer from uh, the album Talking Heads 77. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of a straightforward, you know, it's talking, to, obviously he's talking about a serial killer, except, you know, David Byrne doesn't, if you look at him singing this song on stage, he's not a very physically imposing man. No. Uh, so it's not like you really take him serious, which is kind of cool because the, the whole song <laughs> itself is really not a serious, you know, he's not really singing it very seriously. You know, it's got that, you know, I mean, it's just, that's who he is. And I, I like, I like the talking heads. I thought it was an interesting song and I like it. And I've got, just like uh, Rich does, I've got Salisbury Hill here at number five on this side, Peter Gabriel, uh, one of my favorite artists of all time. This one has maybe, the most interesting time signature of any uh, of his songs that I've ever listened to. I mean, this kind of moves around constantly yeah. throughout the song, but uh, doesn't, doesn't defeat the song in any way that it, that it does that. I think it's a beautiful constructed song and uh, 
Yeah. Probably in his top three as far as I'm concerned. Me too. And closing out uh, side two and this album, I've got the cover uh, by the animals uh, from, um, I forget the name of the album. I have to look it up, but it's, uh, they do a cover of It's All Over Now, Baby Blue by Bob Dylan okay. on an album in 77. And their version, I like better than Bob's. And that's saying a hell of a lot because I am a huge Bob Dylan fan. So uh, if you get a chance to check out that cover, check it out. And I, and I decided to keep that song on there to close out that side, kind of making that whole side a very oddball side. It's not that odd, considering it's 77 and punk was flourishing. They sure were. Uh, but I have one, I have two songs for sure. And the, the Ramones, I, you know, I like the Ramones and I like uh, the Clash. I just didn't fit them in for whatever reason. And the Talking Heads, I like all three of them, Ben. They didn't make my uh, cut. Yeah, it's a... Uh... I think I got two off this one. I can't remember how, but yeah, I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be floating around a lot of different things, especially when we get through. Uh, and by the way, your side B, uh, Brian, definitely sounds like your regular side C to me, but it yeah. is in the side yeah. B position. Sure. So <laughs> I, I, you know what? I think it's fantastic to switch up. I love it to be honest with you. I think it's very cool to mix it up a little. I feel the same way sometimes when I'm doing my setups on my albums and maybe I should just rock it out all 12 songs on one and go soft for the second half or like right. C and D or vice versa or something like that. So mixing it up a little is not a bad thing. I don't think either. So I, I like that part of it. And we're all around a whole bunch of different things here. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Part of the uh, idea of doing these year by year things is to get songs that relate to that particular year or correspond to that particular year. And I think you did a good job of that with uh, the Ramones, the Talking Heads, the Clash, Elvis Costello, all of those bands or artists were just, taken off and making their mark so cool to have yeah. them include or not if you know not that everybody's going to have them but throw them uh throw them some love for sure yeah appreciate it all right yeah. well doc uh you know no more uh no more playing the you know pleading the fifth here buddy you gotta, yeah. you gotta show your cards man <laughs> yeah, see what you, you know what i guess if we're gonna go right in we're gonna go right in right so what would be a real shocker if i started my album with i don't know ACDC. How about a whole lot of Rosie starting us off right out of the gate? Man. So we're gonna rock heavy here on this one, man. So yeah, yeah, this is uh it's ACDC, man. This is coming at you. I think we've talked about it before. They are not solving the world's problems with any of their high-end lyrics, and they don't want to. They're a party band. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man, and ACDC, a lot of tongue and cheek and a whole lot of Rosie. Go listen to that one, man. The other one, if you can't move to that, man, you're not going to move. So a whole lot of Rosie's just a great riff and rock and tune, man. Yeah. I'm going to follow that up with one Rich has mentioned earlier. So Rich, the, the, actually, this this next little section might sound like Rich a lot. So oh, here we go. go. So <laughs> Feels like the first time, buddy, by yeah. Foreigner for me, too. Yeah. So Yeah, this uh, that's uh, what a great debut album, actually, man. There's some pretty, pretty good tunes off this one to start their career, man. So... Um, but yeah, I feel like the first time. Uh, great guitar in this song. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really catchy. And um, uh, the lead singer there, uh, Lou. Um, Lou Graham. Lou Graham. Lou Graham. Lou Graham can sing, man. He can. <laughs> this guy is another yeah. dude that can really just, he's got the pipes, man. Um, what a great rock voice. And shows, especially at this time, 70s, 80s rock voice, man. This is what this guy's got. He shows it. And, other things in his life carried on. Happy Kid came back and stuff like that. But uh, feels like the first time it's going to follow up my uh, whole lot of Rosie's my second tune. In. You follow that up with a little heart and Barracuda, man. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, you're right, Rich. They're pumping here, Ann and Nancy here. They're uh, they, they started off pretty strong, uh, Dream Remote, and then you're jumping into here, man, and it's still got some pretty rocking tunes and Barracuda. A little bit of a steal from Nazareth from Joni Mitchell's Fly By Night on the Riff. Uh, if you want the truth, that's how they got it. So so that's how they got the riff from Fly By Night. And they just took it because they were up west. And that's where Nazareth was traveling at the time. And hey, <laughs> so. Uh, but Barracuda is a great rock and roll tune, man. It works. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't say enough about uh, Anne's, uh, Anne's voice, man. I What a great woman rock voice heavy rock voice for that time man it's great so you follow that up with one bourbon one scotch and one beer hey look at you, you. Uh, i love it nice yeah uh 
yeah, what a, a long rocking tune, man. Yeah, and it's eight uh, minutes or nine minutes, whatever. Yeah, eight minutes. You're in for uh, one bourbon, one scotch. By the time you get to it, man, it's like, you know, how many have you had? But it's, uh, especially when it kicks in at the, mm. when it kicks in. But uh, George can play guitar, man. I think that's pretty evident in this tune. I'll tell you that right now, man. This is a bluesy rock, catchy tune, man. And George Thurgood, you know, I don't know if it's with the Delaware Destroyers or not, or the Destroyers at this time, but, uh, uh, just one song that I've always, always liked, always liked. I like a few from George too. So but this one, uh, mm -hmm. definitely a keeper from 77 for me. So now we go to an album that we've all talked about here. And when I was, you know, seven, eight years old, when I'm listening to this one, I'm downstairs in my basement, sitting on my fireplace and I'm nonstop playing this friggin' Rumors oh, yeah. album. And so, mm -hmm. and, and that was me at that age. And I'm listening to rumors. And I'm thinking about it now with my kids and everything else. There's not a hope in hell that would ever happen in their lifetime. But that's the way my life was. I was music in at that age. And uh, I got the chain coming in at number five for me, man. So Nice. Great one. Yeah, it's a great tune, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I cheated before in 76, uh, Brian. But, you know, I'm still happy I did. <laughs> if you want the truth. <laughs> You should have given me a call. I would have cheated with you. I posted it. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> hey, I saw 76. I went for it. So, <laughs> um, Chain, what a great, what a great tune, too. I mean, there, let's face it, you know, like Brian said, there'll be at least one off of Rumors probably from each of us, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's more. So, uh, Rumors is an iconic uh, 10 out of 10 album. There's not really a bad song on here, man. And, you know, I have a lot of love for, uh, both girls' voices, I think they're fantastic. And, you know, this is like a collage of almost all that with Lindsay too, right? So yeah. the chain's just uh, almost like the, a great compilation of the whole band getting together for a tune, man. And it's, yeah. you want a catchy rock song, man, goes to the chain. Mm -hmm. And then my side A, not everybody's favorite, but damn it, it's mine. So it's bad out of hell to end my side A, man. So, and the title track. Um, yeah, that musical adventure of, you know, I'm in the play and this is a storytelling of whatever this is, this theatrical music that yeah. uh, Meatloaf was doing. Uh, and to me, it's fantastic. It's, um, uh, you know, it's Todd Rugburn here, man, too. I mean, this isn't like some fly by night guy here producing this thing. And, <laughs> This is pretty pretty serious, and there, to me, there's a reason why this is one of the best selling albums of all time. I, I don't think I'm wrong to have this on my list, and I think if you know, it's not for everybody, and not everything on everybody's list is for everybody, and that's yeah. fine. But to me, Meatloaf's "Bad Out of Hell" is a, a classic rock and roll album that'll always be uh, something special to me. And uh, I'm taking the title track with me, man. There's I, there's loads of songs on this album, so yeah. and, and this is just one that I'm taking. I like it. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I I'll be the first to admit I'm not a I'm not a monster meatloaf fan. You know, I mean, I but I will tell anybody I I think it's important that they still listen to this album. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, think, yeah, I, think, right. I think they should because I mean, if if you're talking about putting together, um, it's almost like a glam concept album. You know, I mean, when I think of it, I'm thinking of you know, you know these 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 rock operas but he he made it such more of a refined you know pop album that you know it, it you know it was a miracle that he actually was able to do something like that and i just uh, i mean i like some tracks off of there it's just for some reason for sure. the whole album just never really did did it for me um but that's okay i mean the the two tracks i like off there probably had more to do with the rocky horror picture show than um <laughs> than anything else but um it's still good so that's what I always tell people. I go, you should still listen to the album. I think it's important. Yeah, there's no way I could do this without putting one Meatloaf song. It's going to be on my volume, too. Oh, cool. Not the yeah. same song, but... Uh, yeah, there's lots of songs on that album, man. Obviously, I love your album, because I think four of the six are on my album. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chain is a great one. They, they, let off, they let off with The Chain on their dance album, their, yeah. live, al their live album, and man... For a live for a live version of that song, I'm like flawless. That 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 yeah. song is just great. Well, you know how much I love "Go Your Own Way." Yeah, but yeah, the, the chain is the best song on the album, so it will appear on my side too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 
And that That's means I had to leave dreams out, which I, which killed me. I absolutely killed me <laughs> and silver Springs and, uh, Go, never going exactly, back again yeah. and secondhand news. I mean, and gold dust woman. On gold dust woman. I could take it every one of those songs. Songbird, make love Except to Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. Here's your old daddy, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of them I would have taken. You know? Cool. So that's yeah, how I, I feel about like it. Right Great album. So, thanks, buddy. All right, let's hear it. Here's side. Here's your second. Side B. Yeah. Gonna start off with one Brian you had earlier. And yeah, it's uh, it's Bowie's Heroes is going to start my side B. So nice, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think you you talked about the different versions and stuff like that. Or not. there's nothing like Bowie's version no. of Heroes, man. No. This is um, people will be talking out of their ear if they think something's better than that, man, because that that just doesn't exist. This is you can have covers of different things. You know, you can have a Dylan cover and the original, and the cover's better than the original and stuff. There's nothing better than Heroes, man. Uh, no. Not from Bowie. Uh, a classic song from 77 from Bowie and definitely starting my... It was on my album anyway. One of the early write-downs. So you follow that up with the... Yeah, I think he left the band. So I'll say Gabriel Salisbury Hill to follow that up. So Here we go. That's Here one. we go. One in the book. One. one. Uh, you guys don't know it yet, but there's more coming. But yeah, uh, you're not going to know it off this side. <laughs> there's think, definitely more coming. Yeah. I have one already too, but I haven't the most yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Salisbury Hero Man. Uh, yeah. I can't remember who actually said it. Maybe Brian, you were talking about the the the, t the changes inside the song and yeah. stuff like that. Right, but yeah. I think it was pretty uh, uh, pretty relevant to actually how the song sounds. Actually, so I think that's um, that was well put actually because it's uh, Gabriel sounds fantastic, and it's you know. This is not a fast moving tune or anything like that, but it's really laid back but easy listening storytelling from Gabriel that's uh, meaningful but also sounds fantastic, pleasing to the ear, you know, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Salisbury's Following Up Heroes is my second tune in. Do a little different. Um, so, I've got the same album. You guys both have The Stranger, but, you know, I've got Moving Out coming in after the next one, Anthony Song. So, that's my, okay. my third one in on this one. So, Yep. it's another one of those albums like rumors man i don't want to say the wrong thing here but the stranger <laughs> you almost can't go wrong in a lot of senses taking mm -hmm. one or two off of this album as well so yep. um yeah i just went with moving out um uh, i just like the tempo of the song a lot but, um outside of the fact that i saw the play in new york city called moving out that you know, probably yeah, has nothing to do with it too but it's uh and Billy's great live too, but um, moving out, I just uh, I just love the sound of the actual song itself. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's Billy, seventy seven. You know, he's got you know, he's probably in his peak too in a lot of senses. Uh, running here on his run, it fits well. Fits well with my album, and moving out is going to come in at number three for me. I also follow that up with some sticks as well, Rich. But I I just did my, the one that I've always loved from Sticks, and that's Come Sail Away for me. Yeah. That came yeah. close for me. Yeah. Well, Cartman's yeah. going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can you say, man? You know, the Dennis DeYoung's another acquired taste in some sense, too, right? So um, yeah. I think his voice is fantastic. I, I think he's got an awesome voice. Um, and I don't, maybe that doesn't get talked about enough here in the 70s. You know, all these guys and girls can sing so well, man. And it's not like anybody taught these people. They, you know, Stevie Tyler and Ann Wilson. You just start thinking about the kind of singers these guys all are and stuff. You, Graham, and all of them. They're freaking fantastic singers, man. I don't know what happened in the last 10, 20 years or whatever, but that's a different story for a different vid maybe one day. But come sail away. Uh, great storytelling and that twist and the turn inside the song, everything else that goes with it, too. So, but. Uh, yeah. Sticks has a unique sound, and uh, I think this is almost shows you everything of Sticks in one song. I think is probably the right way I'd probably put it. So that's my number four on this side. Number five, even in the quietest moments, I have to take something from these boys. So it's yeah. Fool's Overture coming in for me as number five. Yeah. Now I, I I've always liked the song, so. Um, and I've liked it more over the years for all the different things that I hear behind the song as you listen to it more and more. It's a long song, right? Fool's Overture is not a short song. So mm -hmm. Hodson sounds fantastic. 
but it's it's got like a Floydish vibe to it at the beginning, especially for the first three or four minutes. You know, you're you're in for an adventure on this one. I think the album is very very underrated from Super Tramp Two, even before Breakfast and stuff. This is the fill between, and it's not a filler at all. Fool's Overture is just a really catchy and. Uh, Dun, 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 dun. You almost you don't know where you hear it before, and you just come back and say, "Oh yeah, that's where I know that from." Yeah, it's just the sound of uh, Super Tramp. I like Super Tramp a lot, man. So, mm-hmm. also very good live, by the way. So, how do you finish that up? Well, you take like an eight or nine minute song for Fool's Overture, and then you end it with like you know, I don't know, seventeen minute song. That's the best way to do it in my book, anyway. So, <laughs> you end it with Dogs from Pink Floyd. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get my money's side. worth on some of these tunes, man. On some of my albums, I'm gonna do it. So, dogs off of animals, you know, the Animal Farm album here uh, from from Floyd. Dogs, sheep, pigs, one, two, three, doesn't matter. This album's fantastic, man. Um, a lot of sign, a lot of people in the Floyd world overlook it, or it's their favorite, or you know, it's my top two or three. It, it fits in anywhere with you, but you know. Waters and Gilmore are doing something awesome here, man. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Gilmore sounds fantastic. The guitar sounds fantastic, man. Talk about a catchy, catchy. The dogs, I, I just can't get away from the guitar in that song, man. It's so hypnotic. And even the, the crescendos and the pickups and everything else that you get, while you get to it, it's just so pleasing to the ear, man. It's, it's, it's right in my wheelhouse, man. My kind of music and dogs is going to end my side B. There you go. That's interesting for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely t- uh, tailored off to be your kind of second side, you know, in, in ending there with Super Tramp and uh, and Pink Floyd right at the Wait. end there, you know, get your yeah. prog, get your prog thing going right there at the end, you know. I think uh, those I, last three, Come Sail Away, uh, yeah. Super Tramp and Floyd. I'm glad that Doc got my Cartman reference right because I don't know if Rich, I don't know if Rich does. <laughs> I did not. I did in not. South Park, in, in, the, in the South Park episode, uh, any time that Cartman hears uh, "Come Sail Away," the beginning, he has to finish the entire song. He has this neurotic <laughs> thing about him, so people will come up to him on purpose and go, "I'm sailing away," <laughs> and he'll just start going. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I don't watch South Park, believe it or not. So I didn't get that. Cool. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I love the Heroes pick, Salisbury Hill. Come Sail Away was close for me. I went with a different stick song. And uh, I'm not a, uh, an Animals fan, so I don't want to say too much about that. And I love the, the whole Stranger album. So Moving Out was a good pick, too. Love it. It was. Yeah. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Very good. Yeah, I think that was good. I think that was a very, very good. And I expect us, for some reason, I feel like we're all going to like, e- either Rich is going to go a little wild on his next one, but I feel like Doc and I are going to come back into the fold a little bit here I think, <laughs> for, a, for a little bit. I think, I think, I think I'm going to have a lot of will be interesting for me and side D, I think it's more the fold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I got five different artists on my side too that I've already talked about with the second track off the album, I think. So five out of the next 12 are going to be people we've already talked about, just a second tune. Excellent. All right. So we'll close out, we'll close out part one here for 1977. I want to thank everyone for watching our video. We're going to have a part two of 1977 uh up uh soon after this video uh, if you're watching it so please uh, make sure you go check out our other videos from 1965 to 1976 uh you know also check out the spotify list on there if you are interested in listening to some of those musics please like sub comment leave your top 24 that would be great i'm yeah. really, really interested Absolutely. in some of those things I, you wouldn't believe how many songs i end up adding to my my song list because i i, I find them on somebody else's list that i think i've never yeah. heard of before so uh, thank you, Rich, for joining me for this v- video, and thank you, Doc. Thanks. And uh, th- thanks everyone for watching. We're going to see you on Volume Two real soon, so stay tuned. Take, Take care. care.